Hey guys, Paperbird here. So I've got this pet peeve of the use of questions in fiction outside of dialogue. This is like when a character is thinking about something or making observations or just asking rhetorical questions to move the story along. What's this war in the heart of nature? Why does nature... But, you know, I want to go full-on masochist here and subject myself to a work that does nothing but that. A novel? Hey, your pal, this guy strikes me as just a regular dude down south, you know, like into knives, guns, hunting, fishing, I don't know, barbecuing, fixing roofs. And... Uh, but he also gives me this French vibe for some reason, like he maybe he picked up and moved to France, or he writes about people who fantasize about moving to France, or maybe he just got published a lot in the Paris Review, I don't know. His early work was just, you know, meat and potatoes stories, but I think he got tired of having to bring out the plates and the silverware whenever it came to storytelling and just jaded himself so hard that he could only express himself now through these really ornate cracks in this armor that he had developed on himself. And I always wondered if he got this resentment over time because of that influence towards Bartholomew. I'm sure he's still thinking about him fondly, but, you know, he seemed to have gotten pushed so far out onto this aesthetic ledge over this sea of unpublishability that you you wonder because Bartholomew himself had managed to stay on both sides. You know, he could write very um, curious, weird, experimental type stories, but at the same time also very accessible stories that were, you know, championed by the New Yorker and so forth. Yeah, I could never really get into his work. It just seemed like a guy with a big bag of candy, you know, it's just too saccharine for me. I couldn't you'd get any nutrition from it, um, except maybe a couple stories like The Balloon, The Indian Uprising, and The Emerald. Those stories really put you in a I mean, they warp your mind straight up. But after these collections, I think if you're on the lookout for something similar, uh, maybe check this out. Getting you some cocktail. Blowing <laughs> wood. This is hilarious. The interrogative mood. It's, yeah, it's kind of like a gimmick in a way when you first start reading it because it really doesn't deviate from when it starts all the way through. And But I'm one of those folks that, like, I see this as sort of an affront, you know, like a challenge. The text almost doesn't matter. It's more like a process that you put yourself into. It's sort of like when you're going to, let's say, a classical music recital, that the music you're, or a poetry reading that you're not really connected to, but you don't want to bother getting up and going back home. You're just kind of staying there. And so the performance, it kind of grabs hold of your conscious mind in a way that your subconscious can kind of float to the surface and you start pondering about, you know, what you're doing with your life and that sort of stuff. You know, this book puts you in that place. Uh, I guess it's sort of like meditation in a way. Um, I mean, you could achieve the same effect by just staring at a wall. Um, but yeah, I like that. I mean, this this book gave you that occasion. I mean, the questions themselves, to me, they seem like a hodgepodge of trivia. First, it feels like you're the one being interrogated, but then it also shifts and feels like the narrator is looking in a mirror and interrogating himself. Or you can apply other contexts, like maybe this is a dying patient and you have people coming in and asking questions about that person's life or maybe that person's already dead and you're in the afterworld and you're getting um, questioned by a bunch of spirits there's just different ways of looking at this book this is the kind of book that i consider like a bathroom book back in the day before smartphones i just keep these books on the toilet the mimicry disposability factor of this book i think it's amplified if you well, geez, I don't know if there's an audio version of this book. I wonder what that experience would be like. But uh, an ebook format, for instance, like that's how I initially read this book on my computer um, while I was at work. Ah, uh, yeah. And so, yeah, that, uh, but then I got the hardback and it's a totally different experience. It makes it almost like a museum piece in a way, like a fascinating object. It's interesting to see a voice subsumed by an influence. And there's a certain sadness to it, but you can always feel this undercurrent of emotion trying to force its way up and struggle. It's the attempt that is crystallized here that I find completely fascinating. And I think, in my opinion, he's doing his strongest work now. So that's my look at The Interrogative Mood by Paget Powell. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.